Hello there, everyone. Today we're going to talk about a kind of unique lesson in being a photojournalist, and that is how to be a freelancer. Essentially, how to work and make money uh, as a freelance photojournalist. Uh, this is something that wouldn't have been taught traditionally in a photojournalism class, not even maybe 10, 15 years ago, because the way it worked is you got a degree and then you went and worked full time as a photographer. Although as money has gotten tight in the journalism world, increasingly uh, publications are relying on freelancers to do their shooting instead of full-time photographers. Uh, and so this is just the way the world is going now. Um, increasingly the photojournalism world works in terms of you uh, not having a full-time job but doing freelance work in multiple directions. So let's talk about what that means to start off with. Um, you can either be a quote-unquote full-time freelancer where you uh, are making a living, you're making enough money working for the same couple publications over and over again, selling your work to them, uh, and making enough money to live. So it's essentially a full-time job, uh, but it's just not on contract anywhere. But it could also be as simple as, hey, you know what, you were in the right place at the right time, uh, and you happen to get some photos that nobody else has, or very few other people have. And that puts you in a really good position to negotiate prices, to negotiate um, purchasing, etc. This is not something a lot of people think about nowadays, especially with social media. But if you are serious about photojournalism, it is something that you really need to learn. There's two kinds of freelance work that we're talking about here, and we need to talk about both of them uh, important uh, in a very clear way here. The first is going to be negotiating a project before you go and do it. So let's say there is an event happening, you go to the publication and you say, I will go to this event and I will take pictures of it for you, uh, and you negotiate this all ahead of time. This is all the paperwork, the contract, all of it is taken care of before you actually go. That's the first type. Now the second type is where you, uh, let's say, happen to be in the right place at the right time and you already have the photographs, now you're looking to sell what you already have to a publication who may want it. Oftentimes, uh, if you have a really good couple of shots or you have a good video clip, if you post them up on social media, Twitter being the most popular nowadays, um, you will find that journalists will come knocking at your door and asking for permission uh, to use the sample of the clip or the picture itself. Uh, if you hop on uh, Twitter anytime after something happens, you'll find a video, you'll find a picture, and you'll find a million journalists uh, and photo editors asking for permission. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you go on Twitter and search the phrase, permission to use this photo, in quotes, you'll find a bunch of photo editors and a bunch of publications uh, replying to people who have taken photographs of a given event. Sometimes this is a breaking news thing. Uh, sometimes this is a, something that happens after an accident. But let's be clear here. What they're actually asking when they're asking if, hey, do we have permission to use this photo? Uh, what they're actually asking is, hey, can we use this without paying you for it? Um, and that leads us to what is the most difficult part of getting into freelance work. If you want to be a serious uh, photojournalist who works and can make money via freelance, it, the hardest part of it is this. Uh, you need to not be afraid to ask for compensation for the work you're doing. You need to not be afraid to ask for payment. Um, it is the thing single-handedly that scares the most people from getting into the freelance world or trying to start making money off of their photography skills uh, is simply breaking the ice and asking for money to start with. Um, so you have a really great shot that you put one of them on Twitter and you have a publication that says, hey, can we use this? Instead of saying, well, yes, if you pay me, uh, the response is like, yeah, that's fine, go ahead, something like that. Um, if you're ever asked permission um, and someone says, hey, can we please use your, your photo, can we use your video, a good professional response is this. I'm a freelance photographer. Uh, I have rate information available uh, if you'd like to purchase these pictures. What you're telling them is you're a professional. You're a professional freelancer, that your work is not free, and that you are professional enough to know how much you're going to charge for those pictures. Now part of that means that you need to take an extra step and you need to go look and see how much other people are charging for pictures so that you can charge a reasonable amount similar to what they're doing. We'll talk more about that in a second. 
if you have an idea for something to go and shoot, maybe it's a, it's a photo story, like what we're doing in this class, and you kind of want to go and shoot it uh, anyway, you know you're, it's an assignment you want to go and do, um, it's a good idea to maybe try to set up some time to talk to the assignments editor and pitch the idea out. So usually at larger publications, larger websites, uh, websites that are run by either digital native or run by like maybe a, a larger television station, a larger newspaper, are going to have a position called an assignments editor. And largely their job is to work directly with freelancers. And so you would want to talk to them, you'd say, hey, this is my idea. I really want to go around and put together a photo story on this particular thing. Let's say it's a, an idea to cover. In that case, if they're interested, uh, they will negotiate a price with you. They say, yeah, we'll take that. Uh, we will pay you uh, maybe $150 for it or pay you $200 or $300 for it. Uh, it. And then you'll start to work on negotiating the, uh, the exact terms, how many photos you'll turn in, who will own the rights afterwards. All of that we'll talk about in our, with our paperwork section. But for now, just know that you want to negotiate up front what it is you'll be doing. Remember, in all of this, be polite. Um, don't be a jerk. Uh, you want to you want to make sure that you're professional. You want to be someone they want to work with, um, and ultimately also know that they may need time to think it over because they may need to run it up the flagpole, so to speak, with their boss. The assignments editor may not have permission to st uh, give you final approval at the moment. They may need to get approval from their editor uh, to say, yeah, it's okay if we pay this person a couple hundred bucks for these pictures or a couple hundred dollars for this uh, assignment or these series of photos in a story. So give it a second, give it maybe a day or two, they may need some time to think it over. And also understand this, if you are very serious about this, you're going to get rejected occasionally. Uh, if you are serious about being a freelance photojournalist, you're going to say, hey, uh, you can use these photos if you pay me, or we, I would like to go do this story, would you guys like to buy it in the end? They may say no. But think about it, you're never going to even get to the point where they're rejecting the offer you're making if you don't tell them, yes, I, I'm a professional, I'd like to get paid for my work. Which brings us to this point. Let's say you get to the point where either from the idea of you have photos already that they want or you have a story idea that you think they might be interested in. If you get to the point where you're negotiating things like pricing, if you're negotiating the rates that you're willing to work for, uh, you need to stand up for yourself. I know it can seem scary, especially if you're new to this, but you have to stand up for yourself. Um, the range for assignment pay of going out to shoot to shoot photographs can range anywhere from about $75, and that's for smaller weekly publications, sometimes in smaller rural areas or smaller suburbs, uh, to uh, let's say, you know, if it's a wire service or if it's a large daily newspaper, if it's a large uh, a website connected to a larger television station, you can get up to $250 per assignment, depending on where it is. Uh, but really what you need to do is know the rates for your specific area. So it's going to change based on how expensive it is to live in a certain area. It's going to change based on how many competing photographers there are, etc. Uh, and you may not think about it this way, but if you want to know what other freelancers are charging for their photographs or for assignments, or how much other uh, publications are paying, go ask the photographers. Uh, it, that's not a faux pas in the photography world. To, if you, there's another freelancer that you know about, go talk to them and ask them, hey, how much have you been paid by this publication? Um, if you took pictures for this magazine, how much did you get paid for it? They know if you're trying to get new, um, uh, if you're trying to, to, to get uh, upstart, if you're trying to, to, to get your foot in the door, they're going to know that you're doing it honestly, uh, and so they're going to tell you how much they've been paid. Um, that is, again, that's not a faux pas. It's not something that's rude to do in freelance photography. Now, of, uh, you'll, what you'll find a lot of the times is that it, once you start trying to sell your work for the first couple of times to publications, especially if they're photos you already have, uh, they may try to swindle you. They may say, hey, look, you're new at this, you're a new photographer, if you give us your photographs for free, you're going to get tons of exposure. Your name's going to get out there. Your work's going to get out there. Um, and I'm not here to tell you that you should not do that, that, that exposure isn't real. Uh, but I'm telling you right now that you all are undergrad students who are still learning 
how this works, you're still learning how journalism works, and you're still learning how photography works. And uh, unfortunately, exposure, despite it being a good thing sometimes, uh, does not pay the rent. You cannot give exposure to your land landlord to pay the rent, uh, and you cannot take exposure to Publix to buy groceries. So ultimately, I think it is worth practicing and worth getting in the habit of standing up for yourself and demanding that you get paid for the labor that you do. Uh, again, ultimately, I understand that, hey, you gotta, you got to network, you got to get your name out there, you got to maybe try to score a job. So if you think that working for free will really lead you towards a job, will lead you to getting hired afterwards, I understand it. Um, but hey, give it a thought. Don't sell yourself short. If you're shooting on an iPhone or shooting on a, a smartphone in general, um, sometimes they'll try to tell you, hey, look, you were just in the right place at the right time with your phone. Uh, we're not going to buy phone, we're not going to buy a smartphone photography from you. Um, and your response should be this: that hey, look, I know even though it was just a phone, that you're a trained professional photojournalist, and you knew where to be in the right time in the right place, and that you got the best possible angles with the shots you got. You also knew to get caption information. It's also totally worth bringing up the fact that you have taken a photojournalism class and have learned specifically. Uh, some of the best traits to, for shooting on smartphones. That's the way of the world. Don't let them use the equipment you're shooting on as a way to not pay you. Sometimes they'll say, hey, look, look, you, you just were in the right place at the right time. Uh, we're not really going to pay out for that. It wasn't intentional. And again, your response should be, hey, look, you got to pay for equipment. You have to pay for schooling. You have to pay for uh, all of the uh, situations that you'll need to be a photojournalist. Um, they had the opportunity to have a photojournalist there and they didn't. So you were the person who was there. And so if they want access to the content you have, the photos that you have, um, then they wouldn't, then they need to pay you because if they, if, you know, they had them, they wouldn't be asking you for them. Um, sometimes you may even get them to the point where they're trying to threaten you and they'll say, look, well, we'll just take the stuff you've got on the tweet and we'll embed the tweet into our story. And in that case, we don't even need to ask permission. Well, if they get to that point where they're being mean about it, then and they try to do that, then I would just pull the tweet down or block that specific outlet. And then if they try to do that, then it will show up as blocked on their end of things. They should not, That it's a really scummy thing to do. Some of them will try to do it. Um, largely, you just need to make sure that you are standing up for yourself. And that's really what all of this is about. Uh, this is our first little lesson. We'll have more after this, but this is our first lesson in freelancing. And if you take anything away from it, it, I hope it's this. Don't be afraid to ask for compensation for the work you're doing. You are a trained photojournalist. You ought to be getting paid for the work that you're doing. Uh, and with that, uh, catch me on the other side for their next series of videos uh, where I will talk about the, uh, the kind of paperwork you have to fill out, some of the, the ins and outs of actually getting paid once you get to the negotiating step.